Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The Cobra King Strikes Back, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. The ancient Khmer priesthood, upon which the people of Cambodia depended to guide them toward new prosperity and a new kingdom of their own, had failed them. The combined parties of Dr. Carter and Captain Friday had found them not strange, wise mystics, but rather degenerate beasts practicing every sort of abomination in the guise of werewolves. Taquan, the young Cambodian guide, was the only clean, idealistic priest among them. And once he had discovered the state of affairs in the temple of the priests, he endeavored to take his American friends out of danger. But here's Captain Friday to tell you. Well, we slipped from the temple down into the bowels of the hollow mountain through which we'd gained entrance to the temple in the first place. But the priests missed us and, like a pack of wolves, took up the savage chase. They caught up with us as we were descending the first half mile of ladders that clung to the side of this bottomless subterranean chasm. And in the battle that followed, Dr. Carter and our Khmer student friend, Taquan, were plunged to their deaths. But we'd driven off the mad priests. Now we've completed the trip to the bottom of the chasm. We're in the tunnel-like entrance chamber that lay just behind the Great Falls whose rushing torrent curtains the mountains of the cavern and cuts us off from the jungle outside. <laughs> now, Patricia, there's no use crying. We're safely down. No more ladders to climb. I saw him die. I saw Dr. Carter die. He reached out his hand for me to save him as he plunged past me. <laughs> Patricia, men die every day. Death didn't come hard to Dr. Carter. It came the way he wanted it. In action. Trying to help humanity. Can you say anything, Professor Lebrun? I can't stop her. Oh, let her cry it out, Captain. It's nervous reaction. That and extreme fatigue. She'd soon cry herself to sleep. Oh, what about Celia? She's worn herself out. We've made a bed for her with Perry's and Skip's coats. Give me yours, and with mine, we can make Patricia quite comfortable. Good. All right now, Patricia. Lie down and let me cover you over. There. That's better. Now then, just try to relax. We won't be far away. Come on away, Captain, and she'll sleep. I left Perry and Skip around the corner with a torch. We can talk there without disturbing the girls. Well, we've got to decide our next move right now, Lebrun. We haven't any food oh, hey, and... Uh, I was just coming to see what was up. Nothing's up, Skip. Just quieting Patricia's off. Yeah. Oh, poor kids. Oh, Perry just went to look at Celia. Oh, here it comes now. Hello, Captain. Celia's sleeping like she was drugged. Yeah, she kept groaning in her sleep. Probably dreaming about her father's death. You know, it doesn't seem that Dr. Carter's gone. He's such a grand old fellow. Stop it, Perry. You'll have yourself in a fine state if you begin that. Oh, who'd ever thought Taquan had it in him? Golly, he must have climbed right up into the middle of the werewolves. He was only half a man, bitten clawed the way he was. But up he went, right into the middle of the fight to help Dr. Carter. Plunged half a mile down the face of the cliff to his death for his bravery. But what's worrying me is how we're going to get out of this jungle now that we're this far. Taquan said the horseman that brought us would still be waiting out there. Yeah, but he said we'd be taking prisoners again without him along to give the password or whatever it is. Well, the first thing for us all to do is to get some rest. None of us is any shape for traveling. You know? Hey, you mean sleep? Exactly. I should judge it's somewhere about one in the morning. Everyone lie down and get seven or eight hours of rest. What about food? Oh, seven or eight hours will put us just that much nearer starvation. I think we should get underway immediately. I don't agree, Professor. Right now, we need the rest much more than food. By daylight, we'll be ready to meet the situation. Why, sure, teacher. What can we do in the dark? Besides, we'd have to carry the girls. They're completely exhausted. Very well, Captain. We're in your hands. Good. Now then, let's stretch out here on the floor. It's perfectly dry and plenty warm. And dust six inches thick. Should be a soft bed. Some bed. <clears throat> well, good night. And don't kick the covers off. <laughs> night, Skip. Professor, 
What do you suppose these things we've seen mean to the future of Cambodia? You mean the degeneration of the Khmer priesthood? Yes. Oh, that's easily surmised, Captain. It means the uprising that the French government feared will not take place. There is no one to lead a revolution now that the priesthood has reduced itself to mere animals. I imagine as much. But I don't like to trust my judgment in this sort of thing. I still have a heavy responsibility to the French government. Feel a lot better if that seven-headed cobra were out of the way. You needn't worry about that any longer, Captain. No? Well, what do you mean? Well, simply that the seven-headed emerald cobra has again vanished. Vanished? You know that? Absolutely. I had it from Taquan not an hour before he was killed. Well, tell me about it. Taquan himself hid the seven-headed idol when he discovered how the priesthood had fallen to pieces. His idea had been to keep the cobra secreted until he could reorganize and build up a new group of faithful priests. What about the emerald idol? Taquan gave me to understand that no one will ever know what has become of it. Perhaps in centuries to come, some faithful one will uncover it. Perhaps when a new priesthood has grown up and Cambodia is a second time ready for the establishment of a new Khmer Empire. Then I can safely return to Saigon and report that my work is done, huh? That Fenlo the killer is dead and the Cambodian uprising crushed. I think your conscience is clear, Captain. Good. Well, I'll take my seven hours of rest more easily now, Lebrun. Good night, Captain. Hmm. Safely returned to Saigon. I wonder if any of us will do that. Hey, what's that? Captain Friday, Captain! Uh, uh, you call, Skip? Hey, listen. Listen to them firearms. The guns are all right. I didn't know these Cambodian hillmen used army rifles. Are you awake, Perry? Say, that doesn't sound like native gunfire. Yeah, well, native or civilized, it means there's folks out there we don't care to meet up with. The girls are still sleeping quietly. Oh, you up, Professor Lebrun? Yes, I've been awake for half an hour. I went back to see how the girls were getting along. Have those guns been firing all that time? What guns? Well, listen. That's strange. I never expected to hear that sound 200 miles deep in the jungle. How strange we'd be able to hear gunfire like that when there's a roaring curtain of water over the mouth of this cave. Oh, it's quite plausible. This far back in the field, Captain. But as soon as we approach the waterfall, every other sound would be killed. Yeah? Well, what do you say we hide down to the mouth of the cavern and see what we can see through the waterfalls? Well, I'm game. No one can see us through the water. That's a good idea. But um, one of us better remain here. The girls should awaken and find no one around. Oh, yeah? Well, say now, uh, look here, I've had enough excitement to last me. Uh, I'll stay. Well, well, well say, I mean, uh, look here, Skip. I, I know you want to go, and I'll uh, let me stay. Oh, go on, Perry. No, really, Skip, I mean it. I I'd rather stay. Yeah, well, so would I. So what do you think of that? <laughs> My, what a couple of ardent nights. Why don't you both stay? Oh, for the love of Pete. That's yeah, just as well. Both of you stay. Professor and I will go down and look over the situation. Oh, well, come on then, Perry. You know, Captain, our young men have suddenly become very conscious of their duty to the young ladies. Hey, what was that last crack? Oh, never mind, Skip. Come along. Just a minute. Now, what's eating you? You've been making sheep eyes in a certain direction ever since we got started on this trip. What's it to you? Maybe nothing and maybe a whole lot. Well, what are you going to do about it? Hey, listen, fella, you trying to get tough with me? Listen, Skip, you may be a tough detective back in San Francisco, but out in this jungle, you're nothing. At least to me, you're not. Oh, yeah? Well, I can hit just as hard here in Cambodia as I could in SF. And if you don't think so, maybe you want to try one on for size. You think I'm going to stand around twiddling my thumbs while you make a play for Patricia? You're crazy. Yeah. What? I say if you think hey, I... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say Patricia? You heard me. Hey, hey, take it easy. We're all mixed up here. Wait a minute now. Let's get this thing straight. But you mean to say you're in love with the chief secretary? Well, who in Sam Hill did you think? Ho, <laughs> ho, Oh, golly, Perry, that's great. Congratulations, boy. What's so funny? You think I don't oh, mean it? forget it, forget it. Hey, you know, I thought she was falling for Celia. Celia? Why, <laughs> sure. Hey, I ain't got anything against you. Come on, let's shake and forget about this argument, huh? You mean you aren't in love with Patricia? No, of course I ain't. Well, I'll be. Sure, I'll shake. Say, we're a pair of boobies, huh? <laughs> Friday. Boss, where are you? Oh, look at there. Now, we've gone and woke up the girls. Oh, come on. Let's get to them before they think they, we've deserted them or Professor something. Professor 
gone. Harry, where is everyone? We're coming. Everything's all right. Oh, there you are. Gee, for a minute, I, I couldn't make out what happened. It's so weird and dark with only the reed torches. Yeah, well, both Perry and I are standing by. Oh, hello, Celia. You out of bed? Oh, I guess so. I'm still so groggy, I can hardly think straight. Where's Captain Friday and the professor? Hey, listen. You hear that? Guns! Rifles! Army rifles. Well, who is it? Well, Captain Friday and the professor have gone down to the waterfalls to have a look. Oh, uh, don't get up, Patricia. Lie there and rest until they get back. Well, I, I feel like my old self since that sleep. Except that I'm awfully empty. Uh, hey, Celia. Uh, how about you and me taking a walk down a tunnel a ways? Why... Why, of course. Yeah, I, uh, I want to show you what a pig pen we slept in last night. Uh, why did Skip take Celia away, Perry? Why, uh, why, I, I think he had something to tell her. Oh? <laughs> Celia's a sweet child. Uh-huh. I, uh, I think so, too. Uh, Patricia. Mm hmm Patricia, have you ever been in love? Why, yes. You have? <laughs> of course. Seemed an awfully long time until it came to me. You see, I'm almost 22, and I thought sometimes I'd never fall in love. But now that it's here, I, I'm glad I waited. I, I think I'd lay right down here and die if anything should happen to spoil it. Gee, uh, yeah. Uh. Uh, why did you ask, Perry? Well, well, I... <laughs> I... As a matter of fact, that's exactly how I felt, only... Only I've had to wait 27 years for it. Oh. You're... you're in love then, Perry? Yes. Oh, that's... that's wonderful. With whom? Uh... I'll tell you if you'll tell me. Why, I... I, um... Well, all right. It's with you, Patricia. Oh? And you? <laughs> Oh, don't be silly, Perry. Who else could it be but you? What? Honestly? Honestly, Patricia? Do you mean it? <laughs> hey, now, now, sit up, Patricia. How can a man do the right thing when a girl's curled up like a kitten? <laughs> No hardship or adventure can prevent the entrance of the little fat god of love with his bow and arrow. Deep in the great cavern under the hollow mountain and behind a curtain of waterfall, Perry Mills has just laid his heart at Patricia's feet and has been accepted. A little further down the cavern, Skip Turner and Celia Carter are standing in the shadow of a smoky reed torch. Skip also has a glowing heart, but a very reluctant tongue. And, uh... I brought you down here to ask you sort of a question, Celia. What sort of question, Skip? Uh, oh, it wasn't anything, I reckon. But you said you had a question. Yeah. Oh, well, aren't you funny, Skip? <laughs> yeah. Golly, I like to hear you say my name. You do? Um. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, I was just thinking out loud. Oh. Hey, did you ever think about getting married? What? Oh, oh, yeah. oh I, I guess every girl thinks about marriage. Uh-huh. I guess they do, all right. Uh, yes, I, I guess they do. Yeah, guess they do. Uh, personally, I never thought much of dames. Oh? I mean, uh, until now. Oh. Yeah. You see, I, I've been kind of chasing around all my life, I guess. Being a detective, you don't know what you're going to be doing next. And then I guess a dame don't care much about a guy that has to maybe be messing around in the seamy side of life, even if it is in a good cause. Uh-huh. And, uh, so I... Well, I never had nothing to do with dames. I see. But, well, well now, things are different, see? And, uh, well, since we've been on this trip together and had a lot of time to loaf and think about things, and, and we got to know each other, and, uh, well, uh, things are just different, that's all. Uh, I guess I ain't making myself very plain, Emma, see? Uh. Yeah, well, uh, see, when a guy feels like I do, and, uh, he, 
Oh, for Pete's sake. Look here, Celia. What do you say if you and me up and gets married, huh? What? What? Skip. Oh, gosh, I, I didn't mean to surprise you. I've been trying to lead up to it. I guess I made a mess of it, huh? Oh, I... I knew you were going to say it. I... I knew it. And I... I wanted to stop you, but... But I... I couldn't find anything to say. Stop I... me? You mean you don't want to? Oh, Skip, I'm so sorry. I... I didn't know until you started to talk that... That you felt like this. Honestly, I didn't... You... You mean... You don't think you ever could learn to like me? Oh, I do like you. I like you tremendously. Honestly, I do. Well, then, what's the rub? Oh, Skip, how could you be so blind? Haven't you seen the engagement ring on my finger? It's been there all the time. Hey, you mean you're engaged to someone else? Uh-huh. I have been for almost a year. He's a university professor. Oh, but how could you have missed the ring? Oh, I, I saw it okay, but... Well, I guess I ain't much up on this sort of thing. Well, I, I never heard you mention anybody else. Oh, I... I am sorry. Oh, that's okay. It was a nutty idea. I think it was wonderful of you. Yeah? Really, I do. I... I'm awfully proud you asked me. Golly. And you don't think I'm one of them... them dumb clucks that... that... No, really. I... I'd love awfully to be friends. Okay, sister. You and me are friends. Hey, what's this you're talking about? Did you say friends? Hey, look at here, Perry. What'd you have to come popping up here like this for? But you've been so long, we were afraid something was the matter. Besides, we've got some news that won't keep. Tell them, Patricia. <laughs> oh, you tell him. <laughs> well, well, it's like this. Patricia and I are going to be married the minute we hit Saigon. The trip home will be our honeymoon. Well, oh, go. Oh, Patricia, I'm so glad. <laughs> well, Perry, I guess you're the best man after all. You win, I lose. Oh, Skip, you make me feel miserable. Oh, forget it. What's an egg like me want to get married for, anyway? Hey, um, don't it seem like the chief and Professor LeBron's been away a long spell? Hey, I'd forgotten all about them. You don't suppose anything's happened? Hey, listen. Hey, the guns have stopped. Shouldn't we go down to the waterfall? Maybe they're looking for us. Of course, we should have gone sooner. Hey, how about me going ahead and having a look, huh? Mm, let's all go. I don't want to be separated. Of course we'll go together. Well, I don't know about that now. Well, of course we will. Do you think for one moment that I let Perry walk into danger alone now that I... I... <laughs> <laughs> of course. We'll all go. It's strange they haven't returned. You might know that we'd be worried. Yeah, that's what makes me think they're on a mess. Oh, please don't say that. I... I couldn't bear it if anything should happen to another one of us. We're getting near to the entrance. The sound of the falls is increasing. Yes, it... It's just around that next corner. Yeah, well, I ain't sticking my nose around that corner till I have a peek. Captain Friday and the professor run into a trap. It won't help us none to do the same thing. That's a good idea. There's enough light filtering in through the water to give us a good view of that last stretch of cave. Oh, Patricia, you and Celia stay here a moment while Skip and I sneak up and have a look. Oh, Perry, I... All right, I won't be foolish. Ah, that's a sweetheart. I won't be long. Come on, Skip. Hey, uh, Celia, as long as we ain't uh, kissing, how about shaking on it? Sure, Skip. Add on, baby. <laughs> you coming, Skip? Yeah, sure. Ride with you. Keep your shirt on, will you? Say, why, why'd you shake hands with Siggy? Well, me and her friends. Oh, sure, but do you have to shake hands with your friends every time you go around a corner? Oh, go lay down, will you? Yeah, we're coming to the turn. Yeah? Well, nobody can hear us on account of the noise of the water. Just as well to be careful, anyway. Yeah, let me stick my head around the corner. Well, be careful. Sure. See anything? Nope. Captain Friday and the professor not there? Nope. No, nobody else. He's strange. Think it's safe to bring the girls down? Well, I can't see anything out of the ordinary. Sure, let's wave to them to come along. Wave your torch. Well, they got the signal. They're coming. Oh, a swell mess. Hey, are you half as hungry as I am? Oh, don't even mention it. I'm telling you, it's indecent to treat a guy's insides like this. How can a fella expect a stomach to have any respect for him when it don't even give it an even break? <laughs> You'll have to answer that for yourself. It's all right, Patricia. Oh, well, what about the boss and Professor Lebrun? Are they all right? I'm not in sight. But there's no one in the cave ahead of us. We're safe enough. Then, then are we going down to the entrance? Well, might as well, don't you think, Skip? Yeah, might as well. You know, Skip, you and I are going to get good and wet before we get through with this. Now, you mean wading out around the falls? Yes, carrying the girls. Yeah, well, I sure wish we had some of them giant human pack horses that carried us behind the falls coming in. I... Hey, look out, run! Hey, let me go! 
me too, Patricia. Hey, you big ape, quit choking me. Get your hand off my throat. Don't fight, Patricia. It's no use, don't fight. What are they going to do with us? What are they doing with us? Well, Skip, I hope you're satisfied. Yeah, what do you mean? You asked for some of those giant Cambodians to carry us, didn't you? Well, you got them. Yeah, well, how'd I know this was a place where wishes come true? They're taking us under the waterfalls. They're taking us under the falls! Well, they carried us through that all right. Yeah, I'm beginning to think they run a free ferry service between the bank of this river and the cave behind the falls. Oh, here we go up on the sand. Oh, lo looks like they're going to put us down. Yep. Oh, there. <sighs> My, I'm glad they put us down. My carrier never has had a bath. I'm sure of it. Yeah, mine was strong, too. I couldn't move a muscle when he got a grip on me. Well, now what? Uh-oh, they're motioning us to follow them. Hmm. Just as tongue-tied as ever. Hey, shall we try to make a break for it? Oh, we wouldn't have a chance. Even if we did get away, what good would it do us with two or three hundred miles of jungle between us and civilization? Yeah, I suppose so. Hey there, big boy, don't push. We're coming. Well, there's one consolation. Probably we'll be with Captain Friday and the professor soon. Hey, hey, listen. Drums. First Army rifles, now drums. Oh, boy, when I tell all the boys in San Francisco what I've been through this last couple of weeks, their eyes will bug out a foot. Oh, San Francisco. Oh, I wonder if we'll ever see it again. When I close my eyes and think of the San Francisco skyline, I think it's the most beautiful picture in the world. <laughs> it's sort of like thinking about heaven, isn't it? Here, hear you folks. Stop it. You can't get sentimental and keep up your nerve. Hey, we're coming to a break in the jungle. Look. Oh, look there. Oh, yes. Yes. French territorials. Look, French soldiers. Hey, you mean they come to rescue us? I don't know. I don't know, but there they are. You can see them, hundreds of them. Look, tents and everything. Well, there's Captain Friday. Boss. Boss, are you all right? And there's Professor Lebrun. Hey, look, Perry. These guards of ours don't seem to be the least bit scared of them French soldiers. Why, well, it seems kind of funny. There's something queer, all right. Oh, let's wait here. Patricia's coming with Professor Lebrun and the captain. Well, well, well. So you're a prisoner again, Skip. <laughs> Getting to be quite an habit, isn't it? Oh, hey, look here, teacher. Lay off the comedy, will you? Hey, what's the lowdown? Well, the lowdown, Skip, is that we're rescued at last. Hey, hey that's... Oh, mm -hmm, that's right. Patricia. One of the French military spies saw us being taken to the Temple of Priests aboard the ponies in this neighborhood. He reported at Angkor that we were prisoners, and the French government immediately sent troops into the jungle. Fast work. Troops got this far and were stuck. Our captors seemed to have vanished at this point. It wasn't until this morning that their native guides ran onto the cave behind the falls. Well, as luck would have it, they they were still in the cave when Professor Lebrun here and I went down to the falls, and they fell on us and carried us outside. <laughs> and what a drubbing I received. <laughs> I'm sore in every muscle. So, when the French commander heard our story, he sent the natives back in for you. Yeah, well, you'd have thought we was being taken prisoners instead of being rescued. Well, then, then we're going back home now. That's right, Patricia. Oh, Perry, did you hear that? Here, here, what's this? Oh, oh, boss, I, I forgot to tell you. Uh, you're going to have to find a new secretary. <laughs> what? Say, would you mind telling me just went one on in that cave while the professor and I were gone? <laughs> sure. I'll tell you, Chief. You see, um, Perry here put the third degree on Patricia, and uh, he got a yes for an answer. And you? Who, me? Oh, I had my usual luck. You know, Chief, I never was good at getting the right answer when a dame was mixed up in the case. <laughs> That is how the remainder of the Carter expedition into the jungles of Cambodia were finally brought safely back to civilization. 
But how did Captain Friday and Skip Turner and the others return safely to San Francisco? Well, for one thing, the French government gave them an airplane to fly to Australia. An airplane that had a breakdown in a most unfortunate place, right out over the Indian Ocean. Hear that, Skip? We've got motor trouble. Hey, you mean this airplane's going to let us down in the middle of the Indian Ocean? Can't keep her up much longer. Uh, she's dead. We're going down. Hey, Chief. Chief, there's an island. Head her into the wind. There's an island. Do the best I can. Ain't no bigger than a pocket handkerchief, but any island's better than no island. Amen, brother. Amen. And that's just a taste of the newest Adventures by Morse, which will come to you next week at this same hour. Listen to The Girl on Shipwreck Island, the latest and most exciting thriller yet brought to you by... Adventures by Morse.